Biden, U.S. opposes Israel hitting Iran nuclear sites, response should be proportional. U.S. President Joe Biden said Wednesday that he opposes Israel striking Iran's nuclear facilities in retaliation for Iran's ballistic missile attack, telling reporters that Jerusalem has a right to respond but that it should do so proportionally. Biden did say that sanctions would be imposed against Iran and that he discussed the idea with the leaders of the G7 countries in a joint call earlier Wednesday. We'll be discussing with the Israelis what they're going to do, but all seven of us agree that they have a right to respond but they should respond proportionally, Biden told reporters before boarding Air Force One. Obviously, Iran is way off course. Israel is reportedly mulling an attack on Iran's nuclear or oil facilities as part of the retaliation for Tuesday's attack, which saw Iran fire 181 ballistic missiles at Israel, sending most of the country into bomb shelters and causing considerable damage but only one known fatality, a Palestinian man in the West Bank. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu declared soon after the attack that Iran had made a big mistake and would pay the price. Speaking to reporters in Washington, Biden urged Israel to respond proportionally to the attack. Asked whether he backs a strike on Iranian nuclear sites, Biden responded, the answer is no. In a meeting after the attack Tuesday evening, Israel's cabinet had determined to respond forcefully, but to first coordinate with Washington, according to Channel 12. The Can public broadcaster cited diplomatic sources as saying Israel's response would not lead to regional war and reported that the U.S. presidential election next month was a factor in Israeli deliberations. After the G7 meeting, the White House said Biden had coordinated the multilateral rollout of new sanctions on Iran and that he and the body unequivocally condemned Iran's attack against Israel. IDF Chief of Staff Lt. Gen. Herzi Halabi said Wednesday that Israel would respond to the Iranian attack and noted that the military has the capability to reach and strike any point in the Middle East. Those of our enemies who have not understood this until now will understand it soon, he said in a video statement during a visit to the Tel Naf Air Base. Iran fired about 200 missiles at the State of Israel yesterday. Iran attacked civilian areas and endangered the lives of many civilians. Thanks to proper civilian behavior and high-quality defense, the damage is relatively small, Halabi noted. But, he added, we will respond, we know how to locate important targets, we know how to strike accurately and powerfully. U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Kurt Campbell said the Biden administration was seeking to align its position with Israel on any response to Iran's attack, but also recognized the Middle East was on a knife's edge and that a broader escalation could imperil both Israeli and U.S. interests. Speaking at a virtual event hosted by Washington-based think tank Carnegie Endowment, Campbell repeated the U.S. view that what Tehran has undertaken was deeply irresponsible and that there must be a return message. I think we tried to underscore our support for some of the actions that Israel has taken, he added. We have real wariness about an extended or substantial ground set of operations in Lebanon, Campbell said, echoing the White House's misgivings over Israel's limited invasion of Lebanon Monday. Israel says its ground operation close to the border in southern Lebanon aims to remove the threat posed by Iran's Lebanese proxy Hezbollah, whose relentless rocket fire since October 8 has forced tens of thousands of northern residents from their homes. Linda Thomas-Greenfield, Washington's ambassador to the United Nations, said at a brief briefing at the UN Security Council Wednesday, the Iranian regime will be held responsible for its actions. And we strongly warn against Iran, or its proxies, taking actions against the United States, or further actions against Israel, she added. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan on Tuesday had similarly warned Iran of the severe consequences for its attacks, saying the U.S. would work with Israel to ensure as much, though he did not elaborate. The time for empty calls for de-escalation is over, Israeli U.N. Ambassador Danny Dannon told the emergency U.N. Security Council meeting on Wednesday. This is no longer a matter of words, he said. Iran is a very real and present danger to the world, and if they are not stopped, the next wave of missiles will not be aimed solely at Israel. Speaking before Danon, the Iranian ambassador claimed Iran had to launch the missiles at Israel to restore balance after a recent series of significant Israeli strikes targeting its regional proxies. Each act of restraint taken by Iran has only emboldened Israel to commit greater crimes and more acts of aggression, said Amir Saeed Iravani. Consequently, Iran's response was necessary to restore balance and deterrence. Russia's UN envoy Vasily Nebenzi appraised Iran for its exceptional restraint in recent months and said the missile attack on Israel could not be presented as though all of this happened in a vacuum.
Iran said the Tuesday attack, its second-ever direct assault on Israel, was in retaliation to the killing of Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah and Revolutionary Guard General Abbas Nilfrishan, both killed in an Israeli airstrike last week in Beirut. It also mentioned Ismail Haniyeh, a top leader in Hamas who was assassinated in Tehran in July in a suspected Israeli attack. The State Department on Tuesday flatly rejected Iran's claim that its attack was in response to the violation of its sovereignty in the killing of Haniyeh. This event had nothing to do with Iran's sovereignty. It has to do with the fact that a number of the terrorist organizations that Iran has set up for years as a way to undermine and attack the state of Israel have been weakened first over the past few months and then most recently over the past few weeks, spokesman Matthew Miller said, highlighting the killing of Nasrallah. To the extent that any Iranian officials have been killed in the past few days in Lebanon or in Syria, it's because they were meeting with terrorist leaders, he said. Shrapnel from the Tuesday missile attack killed a Palestinian man in the West Bank and injured two Israelis, while buildings were damaged in various parts of the country. The army on Wednesday acknowledged some missiles had hit airbases, but said the impact was ineffective. Iranian President Massoud Pazeshkian said in a press conference in Qatar Wednesday that Tehran was not looking for war, but pledged a stronger response if Israel retaliates for the missile attack. Iran launched its first-ever direct attack on Israel the night of April 13 to 14. That strike came in response to an alleged Israeli airstrike on an Iranian diplomatic facility in Damascus on April 1. Israel was believed to have responded to the missile and drone strike with an airstrike on Iran's nuclear facility in Natanz, near the city of Isfahan. Shiite militias in Iran's Axis of Resistance network have also attacked Israel from Iraq and Yemen, in addition to Hezbollah in Lebanon. The attacks began amid the war in Gaza, sparked when thousands of Hamas-led terrorists stormed southern Israel on October 7 to kill nearly 1,200 people and take 251 hostages, mostly civilians. Hamas, a Sunni Palestinian terror group, is also part of the so-called Axis of Resistance.